Capitalist greed is the world's worst enemy. Who would have thought that Dr. Seuss's The Lorax would be the greatest example of that? Dive into the world of the Lorax and you'll see a city that looks like a hyperbole of our own. There's no real nature, just inflatable plastic trees. Air pollution and the contamination of the environment has led to the commodification of air. The most powerful character in Thneedville is the Mayor O'Hare, whose business is now branching out into the selling of bottled, purified air. Everyone else in the town is just a product of the capitalist system in place. The older generations had no voice when the environment was being quickly ripped away years ago. The younger generation knows nothing more than artificial substitutions for nature. Audrey, however, knows of trees and dreams of having one. And since infatuation is the most powerful influence, Ted's quest to win her affection single-handedly incites the reforestation of the land. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Just as capitalist economies exploit natural resources and increase greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere, O'Hare understands that the factories producing the plastic bottles for his business will create more smog, which will force people to buy the purified air. Trees naturally remove pollutants in the air, which would harm his business, so he works to prevent the growing of trees. O'Hare also doesn't want people leaving town so that he can censor their knowledge. He wants to prevent people from learning about anything other than what they've been exposed to in their confined little town. This will preserve the control he has over them because knowledge sparks ideas, and people's free thinking could threaten his business. O'Hare fails to accept responsibility for his role in destroying the environment, but the Onceler is great at holding himself accountable. Ted visits the Onceler to learn about the disappearance of the trees, and he immediately blames himself for his actions. The Onceler admirably puts aside his ego to give an honest recount of his actions, even when they reflect poorly on him. The young Onceler was quick to notice that Trefula Tuft was the perfect material to make his needs, so he immediately knew he wanted to take advantage of the wide forest he stumbled across. From the moment the Onceler opens his wagon, the danger of his presence to the Trefula forest is clear. The Lorax, protector of the trees, tries to ward him off, but the Onceler wins him and the other animals over with marshmallows and false promises. The Onceler embodies the role of a colonizer in his impact on the forest. The Onceler feels entitled to the land's resources, so he invades and takes the resources of the people who already live there. The colonized, or in this case the animals, then have no choice to fight back or leave. The Lorax and animals try to fight back, but ultimately, the technology that the Onceler's family brings in is too difficult for the animals to overcome. The Onceler then exhausts all of the forest trees and moves on when there's nothing more to take. But by that point, the damage had been done. The animals in Lorax are disheveled, unhealthy, depressed, and forcibly displaced with nowhere to go. The Onceler is positioned as the antagonistic force. He acts morally compromising, but he's not inherently evil. It's clear that the Onceler is very remorseful for what he had done because he openly acknowledges his role in the destruction of the forest. The audience are thus naturally inclined to have more sympathy for him. They see how he was blinded by his dreams and ambition and merely didn't have a true understanding of the harm he was doing. It's easy to get swept away by praise, fame, and money. The innocent creatures left sadly and silently, but the Lorax left a message for the Onceler. A single word, unless, was his last reminder. Because unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. It isn't just the Onceler who should accept responsibility for the destruction of nature. It's everyone who lives their life with no consideration for the Earth. You don't have to give up all your belongings and stop using electricity, but our combined efforts to be more eco-friendly do make a difference. We can protect the well-being of innocent animals who may be hurt because of our pollution. We can take care of the world with the little things we do. The seed Ted plants symbolizes the power of potential. It may just be one small seed, but it represents change and growth, which single-handedly inspires a switch in mindset across the Needville. Whether it's about post-colonialism, business, morality, or climate change, the Lorax holds a number of lessons for its audience, all of which are important for us to keep in mind.